Good morning. It is just before 9 a.m. here in Alaska. Eric and I woke up early. We traveled a few hours down the road and we are at a gorgeous location known as Delta Clearwater River. And I'm not sure if that's why it's named that, but it has the most beautiful transparent clear waters and it is also known for its arctic grayling and that is what we're going to be targeting today commonly referred to as grayling they're found throughout much of alaska they prefer cooler waters though just like this one they are related to salmon we've targeted them once before on the denali highway that was a few years back and they are incredibly gorgeous and they're really really fun to fish for so i hope that we can catch one today and show you it's going to be in the 80s and it is a little bit smoky out but that's not going to be a problem we're going to get in the boat and head either up or down river So apparently I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, we will see who's gonna drive today. I don't know if Eric's probably not in as bad a shape as I am. I was gonna go float down river. Um, but we're on a nice little spot. And I think we're gonna try going up river first. The water is cold. Just so you know. <laughs> we're heading out. Heading out yonder. Deep water. Go here and then I need to grab the anchor if you want to grab this. I saw it too. Oh, there was about 10 of them. Well, I just saw one. Oh gosh. It's a fun river, but I wish I knew it a little better because it's really hard to read it. All right, guys, we were coming up river and Ariel saw a splash and this water is so clear. I looked over the edge. I kid you not, I saw about 10 grayling like this big and this creek is known for like huge gray lane. It's all catch and release, except if you catch one under 12 inches, uh, then you can keep one each. So I don't know if it's gonna be hard to catch one under 12 inches, because those ones I saw were absolutely huge. Let me show you something I picked up for 20 bucks. Well, I am not a fly fisherman. I've never fly fished. I've barely handled one, and I put this thing together. Like I said, I got it for 20 bucks at the uh, local sporting goods store. I put some line on it. We had some flies that one of our viewers sent us, and we finally get to use them now. This is the one I'm gonna be using, and I think that maybe this one might be on a little bit of the big side, but <laughs> I don't know. Let's give it a go, and we'll see if we can catch them on the fly. If not, we brought our regular poles, and we'll throw some lures out there. This creek is all single hooks, so we got single hooks on. You can put shorts on and sandals on. Oh, did you see that one splash? Yeah. Wow. Right there. Yeah, they're all in the middle. I would cast out further than where we're boating. What I was going to do is run you up river and just turn the boat off and we could glide down. Because I'm pretty sure my motor's going to scare them. Well, I gave fly fishing about 10 casts. I think what's happening is I'm not very good and uh, we're kind of going fast down this rapid. Maybe when we anchor off later on, I can get a little more practice in, but I'm seeing these huge grayling down there and they're on the bottom and I really want to catch one. So I'm going to switch over to just a regular rod and reel and I'm putting this little MEPS on there, but it's got like a little bit of fuzzy down on the bottom. So we'll see what this one does. This one already has the single hook on it. 
freaking ripe. They're ripe in July? Okay, go handsome. We're gonna keep heading up river. This is not a very long river at all. I think it's like 14 miles from the mouth to where it splits and it gets really narrow. And I'm, we're probably not gonna wanna go in that narrow of water. Uh, I think we're gonna try again if I can just get out to the middle of the river and then we can like slowly flow down. Eric can cast out and see if he can fish. We brought all uh, sorts of lures today. We brought the work. So hopefully we will be able to catch a fish with what we brought. Tails, the yellows. This one? I don't care. Oh, yeah. It's not a dry fly? I guess I don't really know what a dry fly is, but I thought they floated. They do. They're supposed to like land. Well, it may be the way you... It may be in the, the caster. It's okay. It's too hard to tell. You don't know the river. I'm trying to pick between these two. I'm gonna give it a go. We found a little spot we can anchor off to. It's a little challenging because this river is moving pretty fast and there are, well, it's got a good a good flow to it, shall I say, and there's a lot of uh, trees. So we just have to kind of watch out if we're floating. But once we anchor, it's a little difficult to get our, our lures all the way out in the river. And like Eric said, we are only allowed to use single hooks on this river. So these are treble hooks. I'm gonna have to cut two of them off and I'm gonna do it because I want to catch a grayling. And it, it really makes sense because if you're catching and releasing them, you cause a lot less damage to the fish just using one, one hook. Whoa, dangerous. It's like, oh my gosh, my foot went down like a freaking six inches. Oh my gosh, it's like sinking and it's really cold. Oh, uh, I can't be in here. <laughs> Babe, it gets better if you're in here longer. No, that's way too cold. Ariel, I'm oh, getting it. You're gonna die. Don't fish that bad, do you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're ruining all the fishing. <laughs> no, I didn't see that one, but I did see a really big yep, one. He's coming down. He's huge. Oh, that's a big fish. Well, no bites yet, but we just came into a huge school. No joke, there's probably like a hundred grayling in this hole. They're just like schooling around and they're on the bottom, but we have been seeing them jump. So I don't know, they didn't go for the fly. We're gonna put some more weights on our little rooster tails here and see if we can get them further out there and get them to sink a little more. But this is just insane how many fish are actually in this little, uh, I don't know if this is a creek or a river, but there's a lot of fish in here. This is a river. It's called Clearwater River. It's not called Clearwater Creek. Not a baby grayling. Oh, get him off. He probably didn't bite too bad. Oh no, barely. He barely bit. Look at how beautiful he is. Hold on. Let's let's put him back in the water for a second. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt him. Oh, he's ready. It's gone with the wind. Oh, 
That was amazing. That was a real small uh, grayling. I don't even think we've ever caught one that small. Six, seven inches? So I guess that was a keeper, but we're looking for something a little bit bigger. Um, it bit pretty much right away. I couldn't even tell how deep this was sinking. We've got four weights on there. We're gonna keep casting and see if we can catch a, a more sizable one for a meal. He was chasing it. I watched him. Catch and tie some. You can watch him. You know what I mean? Get enjoyment that way. All we can do is try it again again. They're uh, taking over our boat. They're circling us. Summer. You're right, the big ones in the deep pool are not biting until. So Eric and I are seeing probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of grayling fish. And we're just not able to entice them. Uh, they're everywhere. As we're going up this uh, channel, they're just scattering uh, every which way. I mean, I can't even, I can't even count them. There's so many. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Eric had, I think he maybe had two fish or so go after his lures. He's finding the most luck with things that are bouncing off the bottom. So something with a heavier weight to it or we're adding weights. These are some of the lures that someone gifted us. I think the one we're gonna try is this one. And I think it's probably designed to stay on the water, but it has some real hair. I don't know what animal that's from, but they say that the grayling like hairs like that um so we're gonna see if that's gonna entice them and maybe eric will throw some weights on there that is a really really beautiful little i think these are just this is what eric's had the most success with so far it's a fly like this with a little weight on the tip of it nothing is working it's so frustrating seeing so many fish but they won't bite so we're gonna go to the top of the water we're gonna use this one ariel's talking about with like the real thick fur oh look there's like a chicken feather in there too and I'm gonna put it on the fly rod and I'm gonna try to float it down the top of the water. We've seen him jumping, so I don't know. I don't know what else we're gonna try. Can you put weights on those and we'll go further or no? Well, then it won't stay on the top of the water. Oh. You can go further, just give me a second. Dang it! Oh my gosh, that is a monster. I wish we weren't after the new one. Do you think I could anchor or something? I think it's huge. Oh my gosh, that's huge. That is huge art to grayling. Look at the fins down there. So unfortunately, that's a, not a keeper because he's... Yeah. Well, that was a long day of fishing for this one fish, but this is a absolutely massive Arctic grayling, and we're going to put him back real quick. Unfortunately, that guy was way over 12 inches, so I didn't measure him, but that had to have been 16, I would say, 14 to 16, and a 12-inch one will be real small. So if we get another one... We can, uh, we can keep that one if it's smaller, and we just got to this spot and started floating down, and I was bouncing down this orange one. Pretty big 
pretty big jig for a gray lane. So I'm going to bounce it down there again and see if we can get one. Maybe this is just a better spot up river. We'll see. This is a, that one might be under 12 inches. Yeah, that's a small one. Here, here, let's, oh yeah, that's definitely a... That's the perfect size. That's more productive. Up river more? I don't know what the problem is. It's but... a little colder up here. Oh my god, she can tie Unfortunately, this one's like 14 inches. So that other one Dang must have been it. 16 inches. That other one must have been huge. This one is four, this one's completely colors. different colors. Look, he's sticking his fin up. Oh my gosh. Beauty. This one's completely different colors. Let's get them back in. We're getting some action up here. So it's gotta be smaller. It's gotta be smaller than that. That was like almost 14 inches. What? Oh, there it goes. Oh, there's a little cousin. There it goes. Fire. Mission's on now. All I was doing was doing the same thing I was doing earlier. I was getting in that shallow section over there and I was just bouncing them. I like it. Unfortunately, we're kind of far, but let's see if I can get another one. I can always move this over. All right, that, that was pretty productive. We're going to try the same thing. We're going to go up the river again and just float down and bob this little jig, see if we get some more action. We need to find one for dinner, huh? Oh, yeah, I saw one. That's way too big. Yeah, so it's another too big of one. Look at that. I want to measure him real quick. He's 16. So that's a 16 inch gray lane. Okay, we're catching him on that orange jig, which is right here. I haven't switched it. Ariel's coasting me down the river slow and I'm just bouncing it off the bottom. You can tell my weight and the orange color is all worn off down to the metal because I'm hitting the rock. So apparently that's where they're at. They're on the bottom. Very next cast. They're huge. Look at that. Look at his blue. He's teal. You see how teal he is? Find it pretty aggressively. Yeah, you'll know. Feels like a snag almost. You know what? I thought I just. Yeah, it's a fish. Well, set it. I didn't set it. He was tugging. He was tugging. He was like, tug, tug, tug. You could be bouncing on rocks. No, that was an actual fish. I felt it. it wasn't a fake one. Because we're seeing them jump, like, a lot of them. This is a bad spot though, huh? Okay, are we okay in this spot? The orange lure is the one of the day. I'm like super stressed out on this river because there's just all these logs and it's really difficult to kind of make movements suddenly when you need to. Um, so Eric's mainly been fishing, but he's like, cast out, cast out, I didn't want to. And it was the first cast. This one hit hard, like there's no mistake. There's no mistake that that uh, is a fish. Freaking huge! Ah! Look at that fin! He's flipping you the fin. Oh my gosh, that may be an eater! I like to hold them. Okay. at least 14 inches. Look at that. Look at the sparkles. That one's at least 14, maybe 15. Ready to see her go? Dang. See, that's a small one. Those ones we're seeing are huge. 
No, there's a snag is what it is. <laughs> Ooh, that's a strong one. Okay, I'm not gonna be a creep, but that's a really beautiful fish, Eric. Oh my gosh. That is the most beautiful one of the day. Oh, that is a beast. That's the biggest one of all day. Look at its fin. Yeah. Hold its fin. His fin is huge. Look at his bottom fins. That's at least 20 inches. I'm not going to measure him though. Let's get him in. Oh, he was a fighter. I caught him from so far away. That was insane. Well, as the day has gotten later, well, it's not that late. It's 3.30 in the afternoon. It seems like fishing has picked up. Um, it might be even like a little cooler out right now. It feels pretty nice. I mean, the fishing is just totally heated up. I wish we were using this little, uh, oh, that one almost went for it. I wish we were using this orange jig at the beginning because this thing is where it's at. Just a simple little jig. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff and today what worked the best was those uh, jigs with a little weight on them. And this stuff was sent to us. So thank you very much to the gentleman that sent that stuff our way. A lot of flies and really neat things. Um, unfortunately, we didn't catch anything on the fly pole um, or with a fly at all. And I just wanted to show you this really cool guy because he looks like a shrimp. We didn't get to try that one, but I'm sure we'll use it in the future. And I had thought spoons or spinners were gonna work. I think I caught that little guy on a spinner something like that. But beyond that, the spoons and the spinners didn't really work. Eric had like a little pink spoon and that didn't catch anything on it. And we also brought stuff that we go ice fishing with. So like these little jigs and we thought maybe those would work, but those also didn't work. So we kind of brought like a mixture of just anything and everything. And I feel like the best tactic really was just floating down. It was a little bit tricky, but once we got the hang of it, uh, it worked out a little bit better. So this is the first time we've taken the boat out since last year. I was a little bit uh, cautious this time, but now that we're back in the routine of it, I think everything's going good. We're gonna keep plugging down river and maybe we'll catch another fish. Okay, awesome day of fishing and a beautiful day, but it turned bad in literally like 30 seconds. The storm rolled in. We're getting out of here just in time. We're gonna feed the dogs some dinner. We got a long drive home. We'll see you guys on the next adventure.